This game is rated M for Mature. I don't think we're going to be able to avoid combat right here. No, but that's fine. Just going to... Oh, another good thing about the katana. Its range is incredible, so you can actually hit people, uh, hit more than one person at a time. Like that. You saw I got both of those guys. Did that guy just attack his teammate? Okay, they're both dead. You can tell that people are dead as soon as they drop their weapon in this game. And these guys can't see me now. Which is good. That's a good start. Okay, I'm. I have not been using quick saves as much as last time. Last time I managed to sneak right past this guy, like there. See, no problem. Ninety-nine. It was even a hundred for a second. Nobody saw me. Kill the guy with off specs. Kill the supernatural guy who might be a problem. Because uh, I feel like almost angering one of them just so we can see how they attack. They basically just swipe with their claws. They do a lot of damage. Can I please still kill this guy? It's not giving me the prompt. Uh oh. Okay, I thought I was stuck there for a second. I had the prompt for a second. Okay, you know what? You can see just how much damage they do. They do a ton of damage. You do not want to anger these guys. It's, this is the reason why stealth is a worthwhile approach. Oh, they still see me. Okay, this will work. So you can just kind of hide out in corners like this. Um, you can see in this room... Wait. What? This isn't solid? Wait, what's the point then? I, I saw this last time, and this is a, a door lock picking situation, but the... The window just isn't solid right there. Okay, that's that's something. But I want to reserve this guy, because I'm pretty topped off on blood right now. I'm going to reserve it. Okay, you know what? Since that guy is there... Oh, but Auspex is going to make this guy's aim better, I think. Okay, luckily he ran over this side. I'm not at 100 right now for the stealth -o meter. Okay, whatever. I'm fine if they see me. Because I still have a wonderful victim. I'm just going to go take out all these guys right now, hopefully. But I don't know. There's a lot of them I might have to retreat. Oh, especially like this. I'm taking a lot of damage, actually. Let me through. I'm going to die. That hurt a lot. You can see the bullets flying past my screen. Okay, luckily, I've escaped and they can't see me anymore, which is good. That's kind of the most difficult hallway, because there's a lot of people there. I'm going to use this free healing that we have here. We've also been, like, stocking blood points in the Blood Star. But, um, just going to warn you. Also, because obviously this is... You're going to expect a boss fight at the end of this area, right? I mean, that's kind of how things have been going. Um, be prepared. You might not want to use those up so fast. Yeah, this, this wall is... Oh, I guess it's not. I was going to say, it's kind of suspicious. Like, there, there's got to be more rooms. Let's see if I can get past here without being seen. If not, it's not a big deal. Okay, good. I'm still at 100 on the stealth meter I love making up random things for things. Random names for things like that. Like meters in games. I always call them the Blanco meter. Okay, good. Got that guy. You can see that guy move super fast for whatever reason. I don't know why. Like, he he doesn't have celerity popped or anything. Some secret Sabbat ritual I have no idea about. In here. Oh, there's two more victims. I guess, technically, I... Don't know if killing them would actually put blood in your blood star? I don't know, it might. If it does, then that's pretty useful.
Uh, we can actually check. Wow, we have 10 blood points stored. That's a ton. Let's see if... By the way, they die in like one hit, so... Because they have such low health. Okay, I don't think that counted. I don't think there's even any enemies left. I think we literally took out all of them. Oh, okay. See, uh, little elevator shaft. It's a little scary. Yet again, dropping down in an elevator shaft in this game. I don't know why this game's obsessed with elevators. But we are, uh, we're, we're maybe like halfway through this place now. In this room is kind of an issue. We see one of those supernatural bat guys right there. But also, it's kind of wide open. They're gonna start popping disciplines to make themselves stronger. Okay, I couldn't stealth kill them for whatever reason. Luckily, they can't see us. Oh, maybe this guy can. Yeah, this is this is a problem. I would not want to take on all these people. Okay, going near the light is also a bad idea. Let's see if we can sneak past here. We can. Nice. Look at that entirely skill-based gameplay. But uh, I, like I, I think you're understanding why. Um, if you didn't know why people don't like the end parts of this game, like I mentioned, like it's literally just been all combat and all stealth. Well, mostly stealth, because like, obviously, okay, I think he popped, um, potents or something. Something that raises soak, because he's taking very little damage. You can see why people don't like the end parts of this game, because like, it's, it's just combat. I didn't hit that victim, right? Oh, I did. I did with that shot. Well, that's bad. Oh, okay. That's not so bad, though. You can see... This nice little kitchen bar area. And, uh, I recommend making a quick save, because it's going to be dangerous. We have sort of a mini-boss fight, I guess. I'm going to pop Celerity and run for it. This guy, up here, is going to start, one, summoning magical flames like that. Uh, I'm actually gonna see if he'll actually do his thing. He's gonna summon beams of light like this. They do a lot of damage. <laughs> you do not want to be caught by them. That was some nice camera work right there. But uh, they're going to blow up and they're going to do a lot of damage. Like, okay, well it didn't do a lot because I wasn't close. But they're also going to like momentarily stun you. He also does a lot of damage himself because he is a vampire, as you can tell. Obviously, a human guy would not be doing this. Okay, we took him out. No problem. Now, it's just this guy to worry about. Now, I believe it is this area. I don't know if it's this area, but I'm pretty sure. Where, uh, I'm just gonna say it because, like, uh, there's no way to dodge this. I told you that Heather had been kidnapped before. Obviously, it was done by the Sabbat. I'm pretty sure that if you didn't free her... She would be killed by the Sabbat as part of this quest right here. If not, it'll be at the end area. It'll be pretty obvious where the end is. But I'm pretty sure it's here, which um, luckily we spared her from a grisly fate, partly because I was psychic and knew what would happen in the story, and partly because I thought it was the right thing to do anyway. Now, now that we've done this, I actually got lost in this area for a bit. Uh, in the last recording. This little side door is opened up. How can he see us so well? Okay, whatever. There's not even, like, anybody left. Our, our stealth meter is literally at zero. But we do have another victim, which is good, because we took a lot of damage from the magical flames. I don't know if they go away or anything? Because last time I actually ran through them on accident. <laughs> wow, isn't this like... What would, you, what would you call that? Irony? While he was... While my player character... I don't know why I'm saying this. While Viago was feeding on this guy, <laughs> I was taking a drink of coffee. Is that irony? That's not irony. That's, um... No, what would that be? That's not irony, though. 
This guy's in a bad position. This guy's in a really, really bad position. You know what? I'm just gonna go. Go for it. Go for it, Goemon. I've, I've actually never played a Goemon game. Well, like, I've played like five minutes of the arcade Goemon. It's... It is one of the games that is potentially on my list for my, uh... If you haven't seen on my stream, I, I do a new project. I had the Speed on Every System project before, and now I have classic games that I know Q's for having not played yet, here I am. It is one of the potential games for this. Uh-oh. Okay. This is how you know you're getting lower into a Dungeon of Bloodlines. When there's a door that has a load screen on it. Because... We have the return of the Ocean House Hotel music. Actually, I think we had this in the basement of the Giovanni Mansion, but... This does not look like a very nice place. This looks like an even less nice place. Obviously, you want to be prepared. Um, I'm going to be leading off with melee for the start of this. I have four blood packs, two other vitae. Uh, vitae. I thought that was in the wrong order, so I started to speak way wrong right there. And four blue blood packs, that's definitely going to be enough for this. Here's all the ammo that I have. And because stealth doesn't matter anymore, I'm going to put on the heavy leather. And I'm going to be using the katana at first. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty much topped off on blood. I have ten blood points stored in the blood star, so no problem. Smell of your blood, young Knight. Very potent. Greater than our last meeting. I could smell it even over the flood of my fallen brethren. Doesn't that make you wonder? Wonder what? Well, anyway, surprise, surprise, look who's back. It's Andre. Uh, well, you won't fool me. Puppet! The strength of your blood is all that saved you from yourself. Wretched, weak-minded mongrel. The blood is wasted in you. Wasted! Uh, well, puppet. Who are you calling a puppet? What are you... Who am I a puppet for? LaCroix? Nines? Miserable, ignorant spawn. You are blind. The sarcophagus must be destroyed. Well, that's... One, that's not very nice. And two, you still didn't answer the question. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? I will do it myself if I must. And you, you will be purified. It is the blood that he is speaking through. The blood of all the pawns. It all must be purified. Well, he's still not answering all my questions, but um, yeah, let's do this. Here is the boss fight that we've been waiting for. This is Andre. Uh, Warform Simitsi. I, is it Samitse or is it, is it Samitse? I still don't know. Uh, he is going to have a little burst attack like that. This is a common thing that we've seen from bosses so far. We saw that about Buck. It's to get him off you to stop him from comboing you over and over. And he's going to dive into the blood water. Oh, he's going to miss too. Uh, you see the burst doesn't really do any damage though. Uh, I don't know how he missed all those shots by the way. But um, you can see... I'm just gonna pop all the disciplines. He does a lot of damage. Now sadly, because he jumps in the blood, all my disciplines are probably gonna wear out. Okay, luckily through the magic of stereo audio, I know where he is. See like 22 for a damage roll? That's not bad. He's gonna drop back in. Now, uh, I'm actually going to show. Firearms are a pretty good way to deal with them. You, you wanna pop celerity? And then uh, you can you can do a whole lot of damage to him if you don't miss. If you don't miss every shot, uh, you also cannot hit him as he's diving into the blood. My health is kind of low. Okay, he's right here. Oh, I could not back away fast enough. You can also hit him as he's charging up for the burst. I'm gonna die if I don't do this. You can see, like, this is a pretty good way to deal with him, is just, like, bait him to go after you and then shoot him. The AUG doesn't do that much damage, though. What I'm actually going to pull out, uh, what I figured out from last time, is my 50 cal. 
he's like, no, he just dived in. He's right here. This thing does a lot of damage, as you can see. I don't have that much ammo for it, but it's not a big issue. I have seven more shots, which won't be enough to kill. He's right here. But, I mean, look at how much damage this is doing. Okay, we're out of we're out of ammo on that, but that's fine. We're just gonna go back to the katana. He has like almost no health left. I've yet to even use one of the blood packs that I picked up. See, like, look at that. That was like 60 damage on that. I don't know how much health he has. It's got to be like over a thousand or something. It has to be like way more than a thousand. Okay, he's gonna die back in. That's that's no issue. Again, you're just seeing how broken Solarity is in this game. It's so good. See, after you kill him, no problem. Uh, actually, it wasn't that difficult of a boss fight. Now, I don't remember because, again, I've never actually uh, kept Heather to the end of the game. But this might actually be the room where she gets sacrificed in? I don't know. It's either this or the other room. I might have to look that up online just to make sure. But, uh, hey, we took out Andre. That's pretty good. Didn't even have to pop a blood pack for it. And luckily, they're not going to make you walk back through the rest of the entire Holobird Hotel. It, okay, wait. That's the Goldeneye sound. That is the sound of Goldeneye, whenever you like select anything on the menu. That's, oh my god. <laughs> like, that's like the exact sound in Goldeneye. I didn't even realize that before. I I'll go pop in my Goldeneye cartridges I have sitting over there just to make sure. Be at peace, Kindred. You stand amongst friends now. Wow, thanks for greeting me. That was all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> that's kind of scary. Um, is that so? Your foes all lie vanquished, Kindred. I come to help. Be at peace. Trouble is nothing but yours to give. Well, um, to tell you the truth, I could really use some help. A true friend in death is his true love. Precious, rare, and sweet. Pray your senses have not gone so languid that this blessing cannot be savored. Um, well, we can continue to converse her with, like, this. But, although it's kind of, um, uh, it's, like, it's like a BAM response. I don't know how to word something like that. Uh, I, I guess like a, a wham line? That's what TV tropes say about it. We should just get straight to the point with her. I met some of your agents. They didn't share your vision. Indeed. The Chang brothers, my greatest agents, undone by the young soldier of LaCroix. It was obvious your path was greater than I or he had anticipated. Well, um, what's this about an alliance? We did have an arrangement, LaCroix and I. A mutually beneficial pact to drive the lesser factions from the city. And, uh, what happened? LaCroix's zeal in recovering the Ankaran sarcophagus has been to the exclusion of many relationships, mine included. And I, like yourself, have been used by him in his desperate quest for power. That's probably the only thing that she'll say that I'll trust her on. Um, well, how did he use you? LaCroix feared Alistair Grout, the Malkavian Primogen, for the cursed insight of his bloodline was strong and brought him uncomfortably close to the truth about LaCroix's ambitions. Alright. Those of you who saw this coming, uh, from the beginning, those of you, uh, very smart cookies who probably... You know what, actually? This is... isn't this mentioned in the player's guide somewhere? Let me... let me check. Oh no, I doubt it would be. Um, it's probably mentioned in the Kindred of the East book about Kui Jin. But three, two, one, I hope all of you who saw this from the beginning are glad to see this now. And so... LaCroix saw an opportunity to rid himself of two problems. 
a hardened rebel leader and a problematic primogen in one fell stroke. And as you can see, I was integral to his plan. Well, if you didn't notice then, the Nines Rodriguez that we saw at Grout's Mansion was not Nines. You guys couldn't tell that. He wasn't exactly seeming very normal. And also, why would he go and kill Grout? Well, um, things are beginning to make sense now. LaCroix convinced me that an alliance with the Camarilla could strengthen the position of the Guajin. And so with my help, your prince framed Nines Rodriguez for the murder of Alistair Grout. I'm glad because I, when I actually first played through this game, I saw this plot twist coming from a mile away. I don't know how, but I I just knew. Uh, I no, I probably hadn't read any of the tabletop stuff before that. This game was what got me into tabletop World of Darkness. So, uh, so you were the one I saw at Grout's mansion. Yes, you were made to be the witness. For your political naivete put your word beyond reproach. No one would believe you devised such a story. LaCroix used you and once again turned a problem to his advantage. Hey, I'll let you know that <laughs> I could easily devise such a story, but um, what a surprise LaCroix using us. So, um, smart, so why are you questioning the Alliance now? Our dealings with LaCroix have put his integrity into question. He has become careless. His desire for the sarcophagus seems to have superseded all other concerns, including political discretion. Well, go on. It is obvious to me that he wishes to obtain it, only so that he might use its power against those who would oppose him. If he betrays his own kind in these pursuits, can I trust him to honor our allegiances? Can you? Well, I don't trust LaCroix farther than I can throw him. And I don't trust you, I, <laughs> I can ask again, so you were the one who saw Grounds Mansion? Um, yeah, I don't know what to believe anymore, so I'm leaving. Hear these words, Kindred. The sarcophagus is sealed against the ages. Only the proper key will break this seal. That key now lies safely in Quajin hands. Your prince's prize cannot be had without it. Well, uh, that's interesting. I hope you recognize my sincerity, Kindred. I would like to see you reach your destination before your path is cut short. I hope when next we meet, it is again as friends. Yeah, I hope so too, um, but... Uh, I'm optimistic, but realistic that that probably won't happen. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and return to the prince. I'm, I'm so glad this recording turned out so much better than the last one. The last one I was also fighting like crap too, so I had to use like all my blood packs and stuff. I didn't even use a single one this time. Didn't that happen during the free parking quest as well or something? There was one of the quests where I was like, oh, I didn't even have to use a single blood pack. Oh, it was the, the plague bearers. All right, I'm dilly dying too long. And you know, we have another friend that we have not talked to in a very long time. And uh, it kind of relates to the events of the end of last episode as well. And that's Chunk. We haven't seen Chunk in a very long time. Chief, you believe what happened the other night? I couldn't come into work on a con. I bought a tamale from a street vendor and got to scoot something terrible. What a lucky thing, too, because that food poisoning saved my life. Oh, uh, well, that is one lucky battle of the runs. <laughs> You're telling me. But if I had been there, those punks wouldn't have gotten past the front desk. There's two things I can't tolerate, and that's terrorists and tainted tamales. Well, uh, you should be expecting me. I guess you can go on up. He wasn't expecting you, but it should be all right. Um, hmm... Isn't that some also other major foreshadowing? LaCroix wasn't expecting us. Hmm, even though he had trust in us to solve this as his right hand man. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. The Sabbat. They're Ash. Another obstacle is removed. From the enemy, we resurrect a new order. And this in no small part to your service. <laughs> Did you hear that? You were never able to wipe them out completely. Keep it up, and you may have his job. My unstoppable crusader. My victories in this city are in no small part due to you. You've done what I've asked without question, and you've done it well. Take this small token of my appreciation. We'll rule this city side by side, you and I. Well, the $800 is nice, but, um, I found out how to get the key. You found the key. Where? Who has it? Ming Xiao has it. 
but we need to think our words carefully. Um, these are all bad options, but she probably didn't tell you when you made the alliance with her. This is the least bad. Alliance? A Camarilla prince aligned with foreign devils? Preposterous! Don't you see through that trick? They've told you this lie, this impossible, staggering deception in an attempt to skew your loyalties and spread dissension amongst our ranks. Okay. Again, I don't really believe him. Um, well then Nines is innocent. She took a shape and she killed Grout. As of this moment, there is no blood hunt against Nines Rodriguez. The Quajin have revealed their plot. <laughs> they want us to war against each other? Well, to that I propose an alliance with the Anarchs. Together, we kindred shall drive out these foreigners once and for all. Okay, I don't really like his word choice right there, but um, they'll never enter an alliance with you, bud. The Camarilla are no threat to their lives, barely even to their way of life. The Kuei Jin would eradicate us all, but they have not the numbers to do so, which is why a civil war would be convenient for them. Uh, well, I suppose you want me to talk to them. Go to the last round immediately. Tell them the Kuei Jin have admitted to killing Grout, and that the blood hunt against Nines Rodriguez is officially over. Tell them I have realized the true threat the Kuei Jin pose, and wish to negotiate a pact. You will be my emissary for the Alliance, so naturally, you speak on behalf of the Camarilla. Choose your words carefully. I will begin organizing plans for war. Good luck. The prosperity of all this city's kindred depends on your success tonight. Well, heavy is, uh, heavy is the... What's that saying? Heavy, heavy is the head that lies with the crown? But it's like the opposite in this case, because he always sends us to do his crap for him. So it's like, light is the head that lies the crown. Uh, well, no pressure. Well, you heard him. We're off to the last round to try and convince the Anarchs, another group of people that we haven't seen in a long time. If you're wondering why I didn't go see them in this episode, that's why. But that's going to be all for this episode of Bloodlines. We took care of a whole lot. We drove out the Sabbat in LA in like an hour. That didn't take very long at all. Well, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Jeez, the Deb of Night Show does not endorse the goth lifestyle, and take it from Deb, pretending you're a vampire only impresses people with similar physical ickiness. Next caller. Deb, I think the world's been messed up, is messed up, and will continue to be messed up. Oh, an optimist. Now, bear with me, but I know what the cause of all the world's problems is. Nipples on TV? Exactly. Nudity? Not too much nudity. Not enough nudity. Clothes make a person dishonest. They're hiding their true selves away under them. Clothes promote problems like class and sense of piety and concealed weapons. Why, how much do you think we spend on clothes as a people? What if that money were going towards science? Why, we'd be living in a futuristic techno world by now. Have you ever been to a nudist colony? Not attractive. The fact that you think it should be is a side effect of the prurient media. You're not desensitized to nudity. Just think, if the man at the movie concession wasn't wearing his pants today, you'd stone out of the theater in a tizzy. But in a nude world, it'd be, popcorn in a medium soda, please. No, I think what would happen is I'd lose my appetite. And isn't obesity one of our nation's biggest problems? Another benefit of nudity. And what about all the hullabaloo that people make when a person walks around the way Mother Nature made him on a brisk spring afternoon? Arrested for public indecency? Why, in a nude world, it'd be commonplace. Folks would ask you, how many people did you expose yourself to today? As proud as I am of my girls, I think I'm going to limit them to private appearances. Next call. Yeah, this is it. This time I've stumbled across something that's bigger than anything you could possibly imagine. A threat to the entire human race's existence. Ah, Gomez. You know, it's been a bad night when I've been looking forward to your call. Yeah, nothing could prepare the world for this. This is the biggest story in the history of humanity ever. Ever, Deb. How I found this out, I can't say, but I'm risking my life to tell the world this. Are you prepared for this? Sure. People of Los Angeles, vampires walk among us. Ugh, not vampires again. Hear me out, Deb. Vampires are among us and have been since the dawn of time. In Los Angeles, well, there's more vampires per person here than anywhere else in the world. People are killed by vampires all the time, but their secret vampire society covers it up. Who blew up that warehouse in Santa Monica? Vampires. What happened to the crew of Elizabeth Dane? Vampires. Want to know what happened to that sarcophagus that disappeared? Vampires took it. The Prince of Vampires, to be more specific. 
he wants to use it against a league of other vampires that have been trying to get a foothold in our city. And get this, there could be an even older vampire in the sarcophagus. An ancient super vampire. Right, vampires. They're everywhere. You can't throw a rock in the city without hitting a vampire. It's the truth, Dan. The undead are all around us. We need to rise up and destroy our evil vampire overlords before it's too late. You heard him, folks. Gather up your crosses, garlic, and neck braces. Oh, brother. Well, Deb's not undead, but the sun will be up soon, and she's dead tired. She's going home to get some hard-earned R&R. But don't worry, she'll be back same time, same station tomorrow night. Until then, fans, don't let the vampires bite. In a world.